Greetings to all. And warm welcome to all of you, my beautiful people. Come with me in a new broadcast that will give you a more understanding or giving you another purpose and living with a purpose. It's a new goal. It's looking for new horizons. It's looking to deal with your life. Your life is important. It is in God's hands, but it is also in your hands to make the right choices. And you don't have to do it alone. So come with me in a new chapter, if I may say so, and how can I live above average? This is your pastor, Yeti. God never intended for you to live a mediocre, average life. You are designed for excellence. And you were unique, uh, uniquely created. Instead of being one in a million, you are actually one in about six billion. Yet there's nobody else exactly like you. You are unique. I'm not using smooth words to draw you because it's true. You are and I am unique. Everybody wants to be recognized. And those who say, well, I'm not, well, please look and examine yourself. And it's not wrong to be recognized. And in fact, not only do you want to be recognized, but you need recognition for the sake of your own emotional health and image. Most of us have a need in our lives to be different, to be excellent, and to stand out from everybody else. Now, if you have your Bible with you or something to write, write the scripture down from Chronicles. Chronicles, the book of Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. That scripture tells us about a man named Yabes. The first nine chapters of this book consist of genealogies with a listing of more than 600 names. And right in the middle of all these names, God singles out one man for special recognition. And his name is Yabes. There are only two verses in the entire Bible on this man. And yet he is given an honorable mention above 600 other people. Why did God single out this man? What did he do that caused his name to be preserved for over 4,000 years? What made him above average? The Bible says, Yabes was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Yabes, saying, I give birth to him in pain. You read that in verse 9. Yabes is the Hebrew word for pain. Yabes prayed to God, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be from free from pain. And God granted this request. There were three secrets to this man's life, revealing three principles that can make your life above average too. I'll give you a first one, a great ambition. The first secret is that Yabez had a great ambition. While all his friends were content with being average and mediocre, that wasn't enough for Yabez. He said, I want God to bless me. I want something big. I want to do something significant with my life. He didn't want to be ordinary. He didn't want to be common. He wanted to expand and grow. And he said, God, bless me. 
and enlarge my land. Yabez had a great ambition, and most of all, he deeply wanted God's blessing on his life. Many people today just drift through life. They have no goals, no master plan, no overall purpose, and no ambition. As a result, they never accomplish very much. They simply exist. The first principle of living above average is that you need a great ambition. You need a dream. And if you don't have a dream, you are drifting. When you stop dreaming, you lose direction. When you stop setting goals, you stop growing. You must have something that you're pushing toward a goal of excellence. As long as your horizon is expanding, you will be an emotionally healthy human being. God made you for growth. He wants you to stretch and develop a dr- and dream. God has a purpose for your life. And your key to success is to discover that purpose and cooperate with it. God never intended for you to go through life with a half-hearted attitude. Wondering what you're doing and where you're going. God wants you to have a great ambition in life. A life with no challenges and end. You know, a life with no challenges and no goals can be summed up in one word, boring. And I believe that for every life, there are seasons. And every season that comes in your life, you can have new perspectives. You can find new goals, new horizons. So I believe in every age, for example, let me say this. You stop going, you know, it's you're done with university and you start looking for a job. So this will, after your education, it doesn't stop your education, but it moves on to what you've been thought, what you learned to use that. And I know that some people don't have the quiet job, what they were learning in university, but that's not that's that's no problem. The thing is that you do something with your life that gives you motivation to live. And I believe that there are a lot of people who are boring, you know, bored to live. And that's sad. And again, I'm not judging, but there are things in life, even, you know, you, you marry, you have kids, you have grandkids, and even people who get in their retire season, there is an, another season to come. So think about all that. Three common misconceptions can keep us from having great ambitions. So the first misconception is that we confuse fear with humility. We tend to say, oh, I could never do that. And we think we're being humble. But that is not humility. That is fear. That is a lack of faith. A truly humble person would say, with God's help, I can do it. With God's blessing, I will do it. I may not be able to do it on my own, but with God's help, I will do it. That's real humility. Because everything we do, everything what we do, God is still working in us, and all the works are given by God to walk in that as Christians. And the only thing that is the purpose for our life is to... to uh, To walk from there. The second is we tend to confuse laziness with contentment. It's true that Paul said, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. And you can read it in the letter to the Philippians 4 verse 11. But it does not mean that you shouldn't set any goals. 
Paul was not saying, I've learned to not set any goals. And I don't have any ambition or any future desires. He was saying that even though his goals may not have been reached yet, he had learned to enjoy every day to the fullest. He was saying, I'm happy today even though I have dreams and ambitions that haven't been fulfilled yet. If contentment were a valid excuse for laziness, who would ever feed the poor or do something about world hunger and equality on just and justice? How would anyone ever get an education? A third grade kid would say, I've learned to be content with the third grade, and he would go and he wouldn't go any farther. We must not confuse laziness with contentment. Third, we confuse small thinking with spirituality. People have said to me, I have served God in my little way. And my reply is, well, why don't you go start serving Him in a bigger way? Let God use you more. It's only for the glory of God we work in. Our purpose in life is to honor and to glorify God in everything we do. So give Him back what He gave you. He gave you life. He gave you qualities. And the further you go in life, the more you discover, at least if you are working with that, if you're thinking about your life. Other people say, well, I'm just the way I am. And that's the way God made me. But it's wrong to blame God for our lack of growth. It's really wrong. Because He has provided all the tools and ideas that we need in order to grow. Don't confuse small thinking with spirituality. The second principle for living above average is you need a growing faith. Not only did Yabez have a great ambition, but he also had a growing faith. He had a deep trust and belief in God. He had enough faith to pray and expect an answer. He was like the, the, the pioneer missionary William Gary, who said, Attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. And I do believe that too. We have a great God. And He loves to see us, to... to to compose things, to honor Him, to, to bring people joy, to bring people blessings, name it. It's all for the glory of God and to raise up others who are down or needing help and so much more. The Bible gives us some interesting facts about Yabez. First, there is no mention of Yabez having any special abilities or talents or gifts. The Bible doesn't say that he was wealthy or educated. He was simply a common man with an uncommon faith. Don't worry about what else you don't have if you do have faith. God will give you the necessary power. God loves to use ordinary people who believe in him, who are willing to trust him and see them succeed. Yabba's faith caused him to believe that God would help him with his goals and his dreams. And there is something more important than being talented, more important than ability or education. It's faith. It's believing that God will work through you. I've met many super talented people who are sitting on the sidelines while ordinary people with faith are making the touchdowns. They believe God, so he uses them like Yabes. They are just ordinary people with extraordinary faith. A second fact about Yabes is that he apparently had some type of handicap or disability. In the Hebrew language, Yabes means painful. How would you like to be named painful? Here comes painful. Or, there's old painful over there. Yabez caused his mother so much grief during childbirth that she named him painful. 
he may have been unwanted and unloved. His name constantly reminds him that even his birth caused grief in someone else's life. But Yabez was stronger than this handicap. His faith kept him going. Regardless of his past painful experiences, Yabez has the faith to look ahead and attend great things in the future. What is your handicap? Is it physical? Is it spiritual? Is it an unhappy childhood? Is it a frustration job or a broken marriage? Whatever it may be, God says, everything is possible for him who believes. And then the third secret to Jabez's life was his prayer life. It was Jabez's simple prayer request that got him on honorable mention in the Bible. Lots of people pray without rising above average, and maybe you're one of them. Maybe you have hesitated to ask for things in prayer. Maybe you have felt your request was selfish. What kind of prayer does God answer? The life of Yabez illustrated three things we can ask God for and expect Him to answer. The first thing Yabez prayed for was God's power in his life. He asked for a power greater than his own to accomplish his dream. He prayed, I want you to bless me. I want your power in my life. It is important that Yabez's request was more specific. God, this is what I want. You do it. I want you to enlarge my coast. I want you to expand my territory. I want more real estate. Do you pray about your goals? Do you ask God to help you whatever you're headed in your life? At first glance, Yahweh's prayer seems selfish, doesn't it? He pray, God, I want you to do all these things for me. But eventually God approved of the prayer because he answered it. Here is the point. Ambition is neither good nor bad. It's just a basic drive in life. Everyone has some ambition. It may be great or small, but everybody has some ambition in life. Maybe your ambition is just to get up in the morning, but you have to have some ambition to live in the world. What makes ambition good or bad? One thing, the motive behind it. And Yahweh's motives were genuine because God never honors an unworthy request. Consider this. God dares you to ask for big requests. What do you ask God for when you pray? God encourages you to ask for things you do not have because you do not ask God. The Lord said to Jeremiah, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 Paul says that God is able to do immeasurable more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Ephesians 3 verse 20. This means that you cannot out-ask God. You cannot out-dream God. If you could stretch your imagination to the greatest limits of what you think could possibly happen, God can go beyond even that. He can go beyond your imagination. God says, trust me. Ask things. Find a great ambition. Then get a growing faith. Then bring them to me in genuine prayer. What do you want God to do in your life? Heal a bad marriage situation? Ask him. Help you with a problem at work? Ask him. Help you fill a bigger niche in your church? Ask him. God is not some big policeman up in the sky waiting for you to make one wrong move so he can punch on you. He wants to bless your life. 
The second thing Yabez prayed for was God's presence in his life. Let your hand be with me. 1 Chronicles 4 verse 10 Yabez realized that if he got more territory, it meant he would have more responsibility. He would have greater demands and more pressure and he would really need God's help in his life. And so he requested God to be with him. When you ask for God's presence in your life, you can be sure he will answer. The third thing Yabez prayed for was God's protection over his life. Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And Yabez asked God for his protection. Why did he do that? Because in those days, the more land you had, the more influence you had, and the better know you were, and a bigger target. It is still like that today. The more successful you are, the more critics you have. The more territory you own, the more enemies will attack you. The closer you grow to the Lord and stronger you become as a Christian, the more the devil will harass you because he doesn't want you to grow. But you can be sure, as Yabez was, that with God's protection, you don't have the fear anymore. Uh, I mean, the fear anyone or anything. If you combine the three requests that Yabez prayed for, I guarantee that you will live above average. Do you want to break out of the mediocrity? Do you want to see God work in your life? Do you want to see real answers to your prayers? Are you tired of driving through life, not knowing where you're going? If you really want to live above average, if you want God's best for your life, then follow these three principles that Yahweh has used. Get a great ambition. A glimpse of what God wants to do in your life. Get a growing faith in God. A faith that enables you to expect the impossible. Establish a genuine prayer. And a genuine prayer life. One that depends on God as you work toward your dream. And this is not a fairy tale. My dear ones, if there is a lack, if there is a certain problem, give it to God. Let the devil not get away with all your your good stuff that is inside of you. And maybe there is fear. Don't let it get you any longer. Don't talk smooth to yourself and say, well, this is the way I am. No. No. There's much more. Don't say, well, I retire now and so this is... No, don't do that. Like I said in the beginning, in every life, in every period of your life, there are new seasons. And we know that sometimes a season can bring rain and sunshine and the leaves fall from the trees. So that's all the part in our lives too. But let there be seasons that glorifies God through all your life. And let it be fruitful. Please take time to study this part, this chapter. Please consider the life of Yabes, which name was painful. Consider. What may it cost you 
to grow. Blessings to all my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye.